All right, so the other day we got this story about Nebraska Cornhuskers punter Sam Fultz and also the former Michigan State punter Mike Sadler dying in a car crash. It was also involved was Colby Della Husse or however you say that from LSU, but he survived. And this story really, really stuck out to me. Last season I covered a lot of the Nebraska Cornhusker games because of the fact of the movie Teen Wolf, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you go back and watch all of my videos where I talk about the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and I shouldn't even be laughing, but every single one of them games I mention how some of the biggest plays involved the field goals and also the punts. I even talked about Sam Fultz in the BYU game in the very first game of the season. He kicked a 34-yard punt, and he got injured on it, and the only person trying to help him or making sure he was okay was number 34, Terrell Newby, who ran for 43 yards that game. And there was so much coding in that BYU game, and I mentioned how it was connected to the Mormons. But literally, Tysom Hill, the starting quarterback for BYU, he got a season-ending injury in that game for the third time in four seasons, a lot like 34. He had 34 pass attempts, and then Tanner Mangum replaced him. Tanner Mangum, who wears number 12, he came in with 12, 12 left in the fourth quarter. The drive started on the 12-yard line. Remember, he threw the Hail Mary pass that won the game. Anyway, last year, in the beginning of September, I even talked about how Nebraska was going to have a non-Nebraska-like season. A lot of people always think Nebraska is going to win, but we had the death of Dean Jones, who was the, the main character in the movie Herbie the Love Bug, right? And then Nebraska's main mascot is Herbie Husker. Even in the movie Tommy Boy, which connects back to... Jerry Sandusky because that movie is connected to Sandusky, Ohio. And if you look up Sandusky, Ohio, their town is even based on the Freemason Compass and Square. The way the roads are even aligned. Just look that up for yourself. But in the movie Tommy Boy, in the very opening scene, I believe with a minute 12 into the movie, he drops his American history book and they zoom in on it and it has the number 239 written on it. And last year we were in the 239th year of the United States. And the reason it's significant to Jerry Sandusky is because after the Sandusky uh, scandal thing, Nebraska was the first team to play Penn State. And if you remember back, it was a big deal, people praying on the field and all kinds of stuff, you know? So anyway, now we get the death of Sam Fultz and also Mike Sadler, both punters, which I find interesting, just because I talked about that so much in all of my videos. I even talked about the Michigan Wolverines in regards to the Lupercalia and Teen Wolf and all kinds of stuff. I believe it was Michigan State when Michigan, they, they messed up the punt or whatever where they should have won the game. The punt was muffed, and then Michigan State ended up beating them. But that punt was snapped with 17 seconds left on the play clock and all kinds of other stuff. Anyway, I want to go back through some of the history of why I was following Nebraska and what it has to do with the wolf theme and the movie Teen Wolf. So, in 2015, during the NBA All-Star Week, that just so happened to fall on February 13th through the 15th, which is also the same days as a Roman festival called Lupercalia. And in this celebration, they celebrate and sacrifice a wolf or a dog in honor of the she-wolf that supposedly suckled Romulus and Remus, who were the founders of Rome. Anyway, during that All-Star game, we had Andrew Wiggins, you know, who played for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he was 19 years old, so he was a teen wolf. He won the Rising Star Challenge MVP. Also, the next night on Valentine's Day, another teen wolf, 
Zach Levine won the slam dunk contest. He even did the Space Jam dunk. But it also reminded us of Kevin Garnett, who was the original Teen Wolf. Kevin Garnett was drafted out of high school to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett, almost not even two weeks later, it was on the 56th day of the year, but Kevin Garnett came back to the Minnesota Timberwolves that same season. So interesting, all this Teen Wolf stuff over a wolf festival celebrated by the ancient Romans. So Kevin Garnett gets traded back on the 56th day of the year for Thaddeus Young and Gematria equals 56. He was even a former 76er who I mentioned a whole lot in regards to tons of stuff. Just Philadelphia. Philadelphia seems very connected to lots of stuff. But he wore number 21, which I'll explain later. Anyway, 56th day of the year for Thaddeus Young who equals 56. Kevin Garnett equals 56. Wolf equals 56. Flip Saunders died five months, six days after Kevin Garnett's birthday. If you write out the word 55, it equals 56. Minneapolis equals 55. They play in the Target Center that equals 55. Timberwolves also equal 55. You know, in regards to Flip Saunders, too, Andrew Wiggins, who won the Rising Star Challenge MVP, they both shared a birthday of February 23rd, 223. The word Masonic equals 223. The Synagogue of Satan equals 223. Flip Saunders announced that he had cancer on the 223rd day of the year. Uh, they played the Lakers the first game of the season, and the, the score even totaled 223. And that game was a tribute to Flip Saunders. So interesting, they scored 223 and whatnot. Kobe Bryant from Philadelphia, tons of other stuff. But Kevin Garnett also shares a birthday with Malcolm X. Kevin Garnett's best friend was supposedly Malik Seeley, who died the next day on May 20th. It was after Kevin Garnett's birthday party. But in regards to Thaddeus Young, who Kevin Garnett got traded back for, he wore number 21 for the Philadelphia 76ers. Flip Saunders became the head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves on the 21st game of Kevin Garnett's rookie season. Kevin Garnett wore number 21. During that season, they won 21 games, and they finished 12th in the West. And then after 12 seasons, Garnett left and went to Boston. And I also talked about how he's connected to Moses Malone, Moses Malone died last year at the age of 60. We also had the death of Daryl Dawkins last year. His name in Gematria equals 60. Flip Saunders died at the age of 60. If you write out Lincoln, Nebraska, it equals 60. If you write out Abraham Lincoln, it equals 60. Just tons of 60 references. We even had the huge earthquake in Santiago, Chile. Santiago, Chile equals 60. It was like the worst earthquake ever recorded, or all, the second worst, and the worst one was in 1960. Anyway, Moses Malone, the first player out of high school to play in the ABA, Daryl Dawkins, the first player out of high school to play in the NBA, both Philadelphia 76ers. Kevin Garnett was the first teen wolf, the first high school player to come out of, or whatever, to come out of high school and play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. First Teen Wolf. In regards to 21, Moses Malone played pro basketball for 21 seasons. He has the record for most offensive rebounds in the game with 21. His first NBA game, he was even 21 years, 212 days old. The 21 stuff. Uh, the team that he played, they won by 21 against Milwaukee. He averaged 21 points and 12 rebounds when he was with the 76ers. He even finished his career with the Spurs. Spurs and Gematria equals 21. You know, think about their logo, the U. U is the 21st letter, so U is 21. Tim Duncan wore number 21. This last season, they even lost. They got knocked out of the playoffs 21 games before the NBA play, or finals began. So, in regards to Omaha, or Nebraska, I guess, 
Malik Seeley, who was supposedly Kevin Garnett's best friend. He was even named after Malcolm X, who was Malcolm X was born, or Malcolm X was Malik El Shabazz. That's where Malik Seeley got his name. Malik El Shabazz even equals 56, just like Kevin Garnett. But Malcolm X was actually born in Omaha, Nebraska. I even mentioned an X theme going on in the media, especially in regards to the Super Bowl last year, Super Bowl 50. It was all about the 85 Bears who had won Super Bowl XX, right? Even had the whole Black Panther stuff going on at the halftime show. The score was 24 to 10. 24 is the, the X is the 24th letter. 10 in Roman numerals is X. The X Files even came back out on the 24th day of the year. We had the Zavion Dobson stuff. Zavion Dobson War number 24 is a big deal at the Super Bowl. Anyway, think about the Black Panther stuff and just the Civil War type stuff. We even had the Confederate flag stuff in 2015. Right around the same time Freddie Gray was murdered, supposedly. Freddie Gray gets arrested on April 12th. He dies on April 19th. The Civil War began on April 12th. The first death of the Civil War was in Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was from, on April 19th. But, in Gematria, Abraham Lincoln equals 60. Lincoln, Nebraska equals 60. Lincoln even died at the age of 56 in the year 65 in April, the only month that equals 56. So hopefully you understand what I'm talking about in regards to the wolf theming, which I'll, I'll expand even more on here in a second and how it ties into Teen Wolf. But if you go from the first day of Lupercalia to July 23rd, when Sam Fultz and Mike Sadler supposedly died, 161 days. If you write out American Civil War, it equals 161 in Gematria. Also, Michael Andrew Fox, which is Michael J. Fox's real name. He equals 161. He's the star of Teen Wolf and Back to the Future and whatnot. So anyway, in the movie Teen Wolf, there's all kinds of Nebraska Cornhusker stuff, stuff in the background, right? It doesn't make that much sense. The movie's not set in Nebraska. The movie doesn't isn't even filmed in Nebraska, but yet there's Nebraska Cornhusker stuff. Multiple times in the background of the movie. Just seems kind of weird. There's a calendar right here in the background, Nebraska, Cornhusker. There's even a license plate. It's hard to see right here. I didn't zoom in that great, but it's a Nebraska license plate. There's even the part where when he becomes the wolf, he joins the school play that is about the Civil War. I mean, think about Lincoln, Nebraska in regards to Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. What's also interesting is that in this movie, the team that he plays for, he plays basketball for the Beavers, and the Beavers are actually named after uh, the Oregon State University Beavers. And then last year, Nebraska got their new coach, Mike Riley, who is known for being the coach of the Oregon State Beavers. I mean, seriously, what are the odds of that? One thing I never noticed was that he was born on July 6th, which is 7-6 or 6-7. He was hired in place of Bo Pelini, who had 67 wins in Nebraska and was even born in the year 67. And last year, the Huskers went 5-7 and seven in the regular season, somehow got a bowl game, and they went to the Foster Farms Bowl and they beat UCLA to become 6-7. and seven. So this guy, born on 6-7, gets Nebraska a 6-7 and seven win in his first season. He's even hired in place of Bo Pelini, who had 67 wins and was born in 67. Anyway, that Foster Farms Bowl was also played in Levi's Stadium, where Super Bowl 50 was held. But the reason that UCLA sticks out so much is because in the 2015 NBA All-Star Week, I mentioned how it's connected to some love themes and valentines, you know, that falls on the second day of Lupercalia. 
Kevin Love came from the Timberwolves for Andrew Wiggins. Kevin Love comes from UCLA. Also, Zach Levine, who won the Slam Dunk Contest last year in 2015. He's also from UCLA. Russell Westbrook, who won the MVP of the All-Star Game, also from UCLA. So pretty fitting that Nebraska would play UCLA in the Foster Farms Bowl, considering these guys connected to Teen Wolf and whatnot, Andrew Wiggins, Zach Levine. I even talked about Space Jam and how the Monstars wear number zero. Russell Westbrook wears number zero. Kevin Love wears number zero. Tons of other stuff. So I even predicted the NBA Finals that year. Golden State equals 122 in Jumatria, and they won 122 days after Valentine's Day. There's a whole bunch of stuff connecting to a love theme and whatnot. So anyway, like I said, I've recapped. Let's move on to the death of Sam Foltz, Mike Sadler, and the accident that also involved this Colby guy from LSU. So... First off, Mike Sadler is the former punter of Michigan State. I know it's not the Michigan Wolverines, but Michigan in general is the Wolverine State, which is interesting in regards to the Lupercalia and the Teen Wolf and whatever I've been talking about. I've also mentioned how right after Obama's State of the Union address on January 12th, 112, he went to Omaha, and then also to Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, of course, where LSU plays. When he came to Omaha, he gave a speech at UNO or at Baxter Arena. But at UNO, University of Northern Omaha is also connected to the University of Nebraska because it's part of the University of Nebraska system. So that's why it's also interesting that Nebraska finished 6-7 and seven with a coach born on a uh, date that could be 6-7, whatever. Alton Sterling from Baton, Lu Baton Rouge. Alton Sterling equals 67. Then we have the Minnesota guy, Philando Castile, who equals 67. Blue Lives Matter equals 67. It was established in Louisiana on a date numerology of 67. We got both stories on Mike Riley's birthday, which can be 6-7. Blood Sacrifice equals 67. I even talked about in a previous video about how LSU might be having a good season because their running back Leonard Fournette and Gematria equals 76. Leslie Edwin Miles also equals 76, the coach. And this guy is supposedly supposed to be the next Adrian Peterson who plays for the Minnesota Vikings, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. So anyway, when you read the story on ESPN, you notice how the font looks different and bigger. They make, the, you know, like 1143, the 43 is way bigger. I guarantee they did that for a reason. Maybe they do that on other things. I've never really noticed it before. But the 43 definitely sticks out on there. And the reason is, is because Mike Fultz just so happened to die 43 days before Nebraska plays their first game this season, Nebraska even plays Fresno State. Fresno State and Gematria equals 43. They play on 9-3 or 3-9, depending on how you would write the date. It's also interesting that right now Nebraska has been conference champion 43 times. And in regards to Abraham Lincoln and Lincoln, Nebraska and whatnot, the Civil War has so many 34 and 43 connections, it's not even funny. Civil War in Gematria equals 43. Lincoln equals 34. He was born on the 43rd day of the year. He died four years, three days after the Civil War began. Even Kansas became the 34th and last state to join the Union. It was 34 days before Abraham Lincoln became the president on 3-4. I even talked about the 20th Amendment changing a president from starting on 3-4 to January 20th, which is also 43 days before 3-4. 
The first president to begin his presidency on January 20th was the 34th president, also the 43rd term president, Eisenhower. I even talked about how the reason they did that was to lower the lame duck period of a president. Lame duck in Gematria equals 34. Right now, Obama's in his lame duck period, and he's also the 43rd person to be the president. I've also been talking about the royal theme. I just never stop talking about it because it comes up in everything. But literally, look at this. So, Wales, Wisconsin is where they were at a the Coles kicking camp, right? Wales, Wisconsin on 43 degrees north. But think about Wales in regards to, you know, the royal family of, of England or whatever. Britain, UK. Prince Charles of Wales will become the new king if Queen Elizabeth dies. Also, the Michigan State player here, who supposedly died, his name in Gematria equals 43. The big way it equals 97. Civil War, the big way equals 97. So this guy had identical Gematria to Civil War. I even talked about King Charles and Prince Charles in regards to the English Civil War. Because during the English Civil War, it was King Charles I, also King Charles II. And if King Char or Prince Charles becomes the king, he'll be King Charles III. The Michigan State coach even tweets at 1.34 p.m. King Charles III equals 134. These deaths also, what I found interesting, it comes 197 days before the Super Bowl this year, Super Bowl 51. Prince and Gematria, Jewish Gematria equals 197. It's even 93 days after the death of Prince the Singer. So... You know, the season begins on 3-9 or 9-3. Even Mark D'Antonio was born on 3-9. Sadler War number 3, Fultz War 27, if you break that down, 2 plus 7 is 9-39. Last year, Nebraska even upset Michigan State 39-38. Sam Fultz was also 22 years old. If you write out 22, it equals 39. In the game last year, Nebraska versus Michigan State, Nebraska got their 39th point by a catch from Brandon Riley, who was even being covered by number 39 of Michigan State. It was his 41st career reception. Literally, in this game, there was all kinds of 14 and 41 stuff. I mentioned a whole lot of 41 and 14 around Nebraska, especially their defense. Black shirts equals 41. They were founded when Bob Devaney was the coach equals 41. They do the skull and crossbones, right? The X theme that I've been talking about. They do the X. Skull and bones equals 41. They play in Memorial Stadium. Memorial 41. Husker fans 41. Their symbol is the red N. That equals 41. N is the 14th letter. If you write out 14, it equals 41. The 14th prime is even 43, which I mentioned earlier. And I know there's more than I put in here, but in this Michigan State game last year, Michigan State began their final drive on the 41-yard line with 14 seconds left. They threw a pass, and they got to the other 41-yard line. And if they would have just kicked a field goal and made it, they would have won 41 to 39, but they didn't. And after they lost, they dropped back in the rankings to number 14. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. It was Nebraska's defense who supposedly won the game. And then we got all these 41s. The game was even on 11-7 last year. And now we get all of these deaths, or these two deaths, right before Nebraska is going into its 117th season. This number I have seen a whole lot in regards to tons of stuff. Michelle Obama and Donald Trump and all kinds of stuff. It's the day, 11-7 is also the day before the election. Even Muhammad Ali, just all kinds of stuff. So what's also really sticks out to me, like I said, it's kickers and punters. 
Punt in Gematria equals 17 and 71. Field goal also equals 71. And like I said, last year I mentioned all kinds of 17 and 71. And punt stuff in and kicking in regards to the Huskers. Their stadium, they're also referred to as the Sea of Red. I talked about how it's connected to Moses. Moses equals 71, right? Moses and the part of the Red Sea, but Moses equals 71, the Ten Commandments equals 71, Nebraska equals 71. Their bowl game was the same place that Super Bowl 50 was played. Super Bowl 50 equals 71. It was at Levi Stadium. Moses was in the tribe of Levi. Last year we even had the Syrian Exodus. And before the Michigan State Nebraska game last year, I even talked about how there was a story in regards to this handicapped kid named Barack Price and his brother played for the Michigan State Spartans and the only game that he ever missed was against Nebraska and blah 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 but both of them names Barack and Josiah are associated with the law in the Bible and Moses was the lawgiver and the very next the day before actually the day before that game happened we got the shooting of a Texas judge, Julie Kokorek, outside of her home. Then, of course, later on, on the first day of Lupercalia, the 44th day of the year, we got the death of Antonin Scalia. In the article, they even made it clear that Barack Price was 13 years old. 13th Prime is 41, even, which connects back to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Josiah Price, his brother for Michigan State, He's also known for his game-winning catch against Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship in, uh, I believe, 2013. But that game was played at Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Indianapolis Colts play, which is pretty interesting. So the other player that was involved in the accident was from LSU, Colby, whatever, and when you think about Nebraska and LSU, it also reminds me of when Nebraska won its first ever national title. They won it on January 1st, 1971, and they literally won it with 17 points. Remember, punt equals 17 and 71. It was also in Miami at the Orange Bowl. Orange Bowl equals 112. Sam Fultz, the punter, of Nebraska who just died equals 112. He even died one month, 12 days before their first game this season. And remember, last year they finished 6 and 7. Blood sacrifice equals 67. It might be a good season for Nebraska. Also notice that Super Bowl 51 this year, it's played in Houston. Houston equals 112. We have the 112th World Series coming up. Interesting, you know that they died after leaving Cole's kip kicking camp that equals 162. Major League Baseball equals 162. There's 162 regular season games even. Some other interesting 112s though. So Sam Fultz 112. Literally dies one month, 12 days before Nebraska's first game. It reminds us of the Orange Bowl that equals 112. In regards to the NFL, though, Andrew Luck equals 112. Bridgewater, like Teddy Bridgewater equals 112. Peterson, who Leonard Fournette is supposed to be the next Adrian Peterson, equals 112. Olympics also equals 112. And Ohio State also equals 112. So something to think about. Possibly maybe Ohio State doing... Doing well this year. The reason I even mentioned some of this stuff, though, Andrew Luck, right, just signed a big deal with the Colts. And Nebraska beat LSU in 1971. But also in 1971, the Colts beat the Cowboys in Super Bowl V. And that Super Bowl just so happened to be played at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It also just so happened to be the 17th day of 71. 17 and 71. This coming Super Bowl will be in the year 17 even. 
It was also the first Orange Bowl in college football to be played on artificial turf and also the first Super Bowl to be played on artificial turf. It was poly turf. Poly turf equals 43, which just reminds us of the 43 days and Civil War and all kinds of stuff. Also, I didn't even mention, you know, this game, the Super Bowl is played on January 17th, 1-1-7, which reminds us of the Nebraska-Michigan State game that was played on 11-7-117. Polyturf, though, was the competitor of AstroTurf. Think about the Houston Astros, you know, the World Series being the World Series being the 112th World Series. Houston equals 112. Super Bowl 51 being hosted by Houston and whatnot. Before the Astrodome, the Astros played in Colt Stadium even. So definitely something to think about in regards to the Colts. I know other people have talked about the Colts. I haven't even really looked that much into it until recently when I started seeing some of these events. Anyway, so the Colts won't win Super Bowl V, which was also the first modern era Super Bowl, which is kind of interesting. But it made me think about Houston. The first Super Bowl that's ever played in Houston was Super Bowl VIII, and it was the Miami Dolphins who beat the Minnesota Vikings. The same weekend that Nebraska beat Michigan State last year was the weekend that Teddy Bridgewater of the Minnesota Vikings got a concussion or he, he got knocked out in the game as a big old deal. What's super interesting about that is Teddy Bridgewater is originally from Miami, Florida, and the guy who knocked him out also from Miami, Florida. So we got this foreshadowing of Miami, the Orange Bowl, and, you know, Miami of the Super Bowl in 1971 that was in the Orange Bowl. Also, the guy who hit him, LaMarcus Joyner, played for the St. Louis Rams, which reminded me a lot of the death of Lawrence Phillips, the former Nebraska Cornhusker who was drafted to the Rams. Played the majority of his small career there, but he also played for the Miami Dolphins for a few games. You know, in regards to concussion, too, he's also supposedly responsible for the retirement of Steve Young because he missed a, bl a block. They gave him a career-ending concussion, blah, blah, blah. But what really stuck, sticks out to me is that he died on January 13th this year. That was the same day that Obama was in Omaha giving a speech at UNO. And I know Omaha isn't Lincoln, but it is connected through UNO to Lincoln. So, interesting. Also interesting... You know, the only time that Michigan State has ever played LSU ever was in the Independence Bowl in 1995, and they lost 45-26. to This was Lawrence Phillips' senior season at Nebraska. They also won the national championship against Florida. It was a back-to-back -back championship because they beat Miami the previous year. So just something to think about in regards to the three people involved in this death. The only time these two teams have played, Michigan State lost big, and Nebraska won the national championship. Also, if you go from that date, the day of Lawrence Phillips' death and Obama going to Omaha, Sam Fultz dies 192 la days later. If you write out Foster Farms Bowl, it equals 192. That was his last game. Also, Indianapolis Colts equals 192. Minnesota Vikings and Indianapolis Colts both equal 75 the small way. Just another interesting thing, the Vikings lost Super Bowl IX in 1975, the equal 75. It's no wonder why they were there. It's also a span of six months, ten days. Last year the Miami Dolphins even went six and ten. The Colts are originally from Baltimore where the first death of the Civil War was. Dolphins equals 43 and 97, just like Civil War, just like Mike Sadler, the Michigan State player who supposedly died. When you think of Teddy Bridgewater, I also it also reminds me of Teddy Roosevelt, who gave a speech at Falcon Heights, Minnesota, 
where Philando Castile had died. He gave this speech just days before the president at the time, William McKinley, had died or was assassinated or whatever. When Obama gave a State of the Union, he went to Omaha, then he went to uh, Baton Rouge, and he gave a speech at McKinley High School in Baton Rouge, right? I mean, give me a break. Baton Rouge, named after the Red Stick, Teddy Roosevelt's speech in Falcon Heights, Minnesota, was a famous speech about the Big Stick. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Teddy Bridgewater also reminds me of the Moneta, Virginia shooting last year. You know, it was in Bridgewater. They even showed the fake picture of the guy that said Franklin Bridge, or said Franklin County Bridge. And they even showed the Pennsylvania, the guy from NASCAR or whatever who died last year. For me, I still feel like there's something big going on with the Franklin Bridge and Philadelphia. But who knows? It was on the 238th day of the year. All kinds of stuff on CNN when they showed the Alton Sterling shooting. They told us that Baton Rouge has 238,000 people. The CNN article about Philando Castile. They shortened the like nine minute video up to two minutes and 38. So definitely something significant about 238. And they wanted you to remember this Bridgewater stuff. So. Miami also super connected to Nebraska. You know, they have Imdomicon Sue, or however you say his Donkey Kong Sue, who's known to be a bully. He just signed a humongous contract last year with the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins also had Richie Incognito, a former Nebraska Cornhusker, who was part of the bullying scandal with Jonathan Martin. Richie Incognito equals 158, Jonathan Martin 158. Supposedly, he was just mad about being moved out of position, and they put Bryant McKinney in there. Bryant McKinney, 158. What are the odds of that? Think about just in regards to Civil War, domestic violence, the team fighting within. Jonathan Martin, the guy who supposedly got bullied, even wore 71. Punt equals 71. He went to college at Stanford, where Andrew Luck played. Which also reminds me of the death of the former Vikings head coach, Dennis Green, who died at the age of 67. That connects to all of the Nebraska Cornhusker stuff from last year. He was the coach at Stanford three different times. The last time he's even the head coach. He died on 21-7, was born on 2-17, 217. Obama came to Omaha on January 13th. That equals 217. He was born on the 217th day this year. Because it's a leap year, it would be the 217th day. I even talked about on this same day, 21-7, the NBA moved their All-Star game next year in 2017. Out of, they're moving it out of uh, North Carolina because of the bathroom law. But the NBA All-Star week begins on 217 next year, you know? All pre, all planned, you know, it's just ridiculous. Also, think about just the color green in regards to Michigan State. You know, Michigan State, all about the green. I even went to a Michigan game once. I was wearing a green flannel jacket. Didn't think anything of it. And people were talking crap to me the whole time. And I was rooting for Michigan. Dennis Green also, he did win one Super Bowl, you know, it was a Super Bowl 23 when the 49ers beat the Bengals. He coached the 49ers, obviously. It was the first Super Bowl that was played in Miami that was not played at the Orange Bowl. And in this Super Bowl, the Bengals' only touchdown was a touchdown return by Stanford Jennings. I also want to point out that Scott Frost became Nebraska's quarterback of the year after L Lawrence Phillips left. And he led them to the co-championship with Michigan. You know, the most ridiculous, stupid stuff ever. But Scott Frost was a transfer from Stanford and also the 67th pick in the NFL draft. Last year, Stanford also just murdered Iowa in the Rose Bowl. And it also reminds me of the death of Kyle Callaway. 
the former Iowa Hawkeye lineman uh, who died on Jan or July 2nd, or also 2 slash 7. If you notice, the total score was even 61, which is interesting. The Civil War began in 61. The Rose Bowl Parade last year, it was grand marshal marshaled by Ken Burns, the guy that's famous for the documentary The Civil War. I just thought it was interesting that Kyle Callaway dies on 7-2 or 2-7. Then we get the death of Nebraska punter who wore number 27. You know, last year when I said he got hurt in the BYU game, it was even his 27th game. If you add up the numbers of all the players that were involved in the accident, it was number 3, 27, and 42 would equal 72. Just like artificial turf it ties into the Orange Bowl once again. Stanford Jennings, 72. Bowley, 72. Incognito even plays for the Bills where Kyle Callaway played. Just kind of interesting. Fultz, war number 27. Beavers equals 27 and 72. That ties into Teen Wolf. Nebraska's first ever bowl game was even the 27th Rose Bowl in 1941. And they lost, or yeah, they lost another, none other than Stanford. The total score was even 34 points. A number that's just super surrounded to Nebraska. They scored 13 points. The 13th prime is 41, like all the black shirt stuff I showed earlier. In regards to Miami, once again, this guy, Zach Bowman, also played for the Dolphins last year. He was the first Husker to give up his black shirt from poor playing. It was after they played Minnesota. He also was signed to the Vikings at one time. And if you remember last year, when Nebraska played Miami, the Hurricanes, it was a huge coded game. The, you know, they even went to overtime 33-33. to The game even became 33-33 to with 33 seconds left. Even though if you go watch it, there's no reason that the clock ticked down to 33-33. to It should have been like 35 seconds. Later in overtime... You had number 71, Alex Lewis, who had the late hit out of bounds that cost him the game. He hit Corn Elder, who had intercepted the ball in overtime. So Nebraska basically loses. Nebraska Cornhuskers lose because of a guy whose name is Corn, even. I mean, come on. That is, how did people not understand that or not see that it's completely scripted and made up, you know? Also in this game, Miami's, Miami had players named Burns and Bush. And they kept showing them a whole bunch of times together. Remember, Moses equals 71. The Ten Commandments equals 71. Moses talked to God through the burning bush. I mean, it is such a joke. Also, in this game, the players named Bush and Carter got ejected for targeting. I mean, what do you think of instantly? George Bush, Jimmy Carter, they both turned 91 years old last year. If you include the end date, they even turned 91 112 days apart. Just like Sam Fultz equals 112. Sam Fultz even dies one month, 12 days after George Bush's birthday this year, his 92nd birthday. He was the 41st and 43rd vice president. 41st president, I mean, if you go from 723 to Jimmy Carter's birthday, span of 71 days, he was the 39th president. I mean, if you write their names out together, it equals 43. Other interesting stuff, Prince Charles was born in 48. He turned 22 years old 48 days before the 71 Orange Bowl. Just reminds me of Sam Foltz dying at the age of 22. They die in Wisconsin. Wisconsin equals 44. Kill equals 44. Nebraska equals 44. They're, this year they're going for their 44th conference championship. Talked about Teen Wolf in regards to Lupercalia that equals 44. That begins on the 44th day of the year. Fultz is even from Greeley Center, Nebraska. That if you read it out, it equals 213. 
a lot like February 13th, the 44th day of the year, the first day of Lupercalia. Nebraska even plays Wisconsin on October 29th, which is 98 days after the death. Lupercalia also equals 98, the big way. Nebraska also plays Iowa on November 25th, which is four months and three days after Sam Fultz dies. It's a very interesting 43 days before their first game. He was also born on January 21st. Revelation equals 121. Lots of stuff in regards to death in 121. You know, I've even mentioned tons of stuff about Philadelphia. Philadelphia named after the book of Revelation. Michigan State, though, plays in East Lansing. East Lansing equals 121. You can even write the date as 21 slash 1, and Fultz dies 211 days after the Foster Farms Bowl, his last game. Also, if you go from January 21st to the day that he died, it's 185 days. Wales, Wisconsin, where they supposedly had were leaving the camp there, equals 185 LSU will also be in its 112th season this year. Remember Prince, the singer, died on the 112th day of the year. The Simpsons killed him off on 11-2. Tons of other 112s were in the 112th World Series, like I said. The last time that Nebraska won a national championship was in 97 when they split it with the Wolverines. It was 19 seasons. This season will be 19 seasons after that. And this year, the championship game is on 1 9 or also 9 slash 1. Just interesting. I talked a lot about how 91 seemed to be a bad number last year. Maybe it's going to be a good number this year. I talked about the death of Herbie, the love bug actor who died on 9 1 and how it was connected to. The Nebraska Cornhuskers and Herbie Husker and Tommy Boy, like I'm saying. So, interesting, the game's on 1 slash 9 or 9 slash 1. It'll also be 19 seasons after they last won. Mike Riley, Nebraska's coach, equals 53. He was born in 53. Herbie, on the movie, is car number 53. It's also, Nebraska would, would be playing its 53rd bowl game. They're, they're in you. N is 5, U is 3, a lot like 53. Right now, Mike Riley has 99 career coaching wins. So my guess is that they're going to win 13 games this season. They could possibly make the championship game and lose. There's a bunch of different scenarios. You know, they could lose one game, then win the Big Ten championship, then win just a bowl game, or they could lose the game, win the Big Ten championship, win the playoff game, and then lose the championship. So I don't know. I got a good feeling Nebraska is going to end up so Mike Riley can have 112 coaching wins. Seems to make the most sense. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. Just throwing it out there. Just interesting in regards to the death of Sam Fultz and the 112s. Les Miles, the coach of the LSU Tigers, has 140 wins right now. So if they went undefeated, it would be 155 wins. Also, in regards to the Civil War, it would be 155 years since the Civil War began, which would be kind of interesting. LSU also plays Wisconsin the very first game of the season. So this guy survives a car wreck in Wisconsin, and then now they're going to play Wisconsin the first game of the season. Makes me wonder. Michigan State will also be in its 92nd year, and their first game is against Furman, and they their first game is on 9-2. So they're, they're going into their 92nd year. Their first game is on 9-2. Their coach's last name equals 92. The movie Teen Wolf is even 92 minutes long. Interesting, the 1971 Orange Bowl, the score was 12 to 17, which totals 29, the mirror of 92. Super Bowl V, which was in 71, the total was 29, which also is the mirror of 92. 
which will also reminds me of the death of Kyle Callaway again, the former Iowa Hawkeye, because Iowa is the 29th state. Last year, they lost to Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship with a total score of 29. They lost by three that equals 29. They was in Lucas Oil, once again reminding us of the Colts. Equals 29, Herbert Hoover, the only president from Iowa, became president in 1929, the same year the stock market crash happened. Kinnick Stadium opened in 1929. There's so many connections to Iowa and 29. We even have Interstate 29 that goes all the way through Iowa. I just don't see Iowa making the national championship, though, you know? It just doesn't seem to make that much sense. I feel like a lot of it's connected to Iowa, but I don't know. I feel like for whatever the reason, they love Nebraska. They love Nebraska losing in bowl games, it seems like. You know, so possibly it could be Michigan State. There's a lot of stuff pointing to 112, which is very significant to multiple sports this year. Seems like Nebraska is going to have a great season. I've also talked about LSU. Also connecting LSU to Omaha and Omaha connecting to Lincoln in regards to Obama's visit this year. And also the death of Lawrence Phillips really makes me feel like Nebraska is going to have a good season. It also seems to be super connected to the Colts versus Vikings in the Super Bowl. But, you know, all of this, who knows? You know, lots of things happen. I'm going to keep following it. Right now, in my head, I see, hey, Nebraska might be having a good season. LSU is going to have a good season. I'm not guaranteeing anything. Remember I said Ohio State equals 112 as well. But uh, lots of stuff definitely seems to be pointing to the Colts, who, interestingly enough, even rhyme with Fultz, if that's how you really pronounce it. Fultz and Colts. So, tons of stuff with Lupercalia and sacrificing the wolf. I talked a lot about, you know, who knows? Maybe Michigan. Maybe it's something to do with Michigan. Seems like they're always sacrificing the wolf, though. And other teams are connected that aren't the wolf. But, like I said, I'm just documenting it. We'll see how it plays out from here. Right now, though, I feel like Nebraska's going to have a good season. The Colts and the Vikings are going to have a good season. Michigan State possibly can have a good season. It might be a bad season, though. Iowa, I think, is going to have a decent season as well, just because of the death of Kyle Callaway. I definitely don't think they're going to the national championship or anything like that. They never seem to. It doesn't seem to really completely fit. And maybe possibly since it happened in Wisconsin, there's something special about Wisconsin. We'll see, you know. Just throwing it out there. I want to put the information out. I'll build off of it, see where it goes. Not going to make any real big predictions as of right now, but seems pretty interesting. Have a good night.